Love from within. Nurturing self-love for a thriving marriage. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self-Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, your host. Now, this is actually the first podcast that we're having on Self-Love Monday here on Marriage Mastery. And I want to thank you for those of you who didn't get the chance. Go back and listen to the first episode, which happens to be uh, Marriage Building, which is for Thursdays. But that was actually the first podcast we did for this particular podcast last week. So the reason we wanted to go into self-love is because I believe that is the starting block of all relationships. Until you know how to love the person you see in the mirror, you can't go out because think about this. The person you are is who you present to the world. I know that sounded so uh, philosophical, (laughs) but think about it. If you're angry, that's who you present to the world. If you're sad, that's who you present to the world. So however you're feeling, however you think about yourself, that is the person that you present to the world. And then that brings on who you're going to actually attract into your life as far as a partner or as far as the people that even hang around you. So we have to get taken care of first before we start looking at the relationships that we're in. Because guess what? Those relationships are just a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. So let's talk about the self-love thing. Self-love refers to the practice of nurturing and caring for oneself emotionally, physically, and mentally. It involves recognizing your worth, accepting yourself as you are, and prioritizing your well-being and happiness. See, folks, a lot of times, and I know I'm guilty of this too, we get so caught into saying yes to everyone, that it affects our well-being and actually our our happiness because it's not necessarily something we want to do. We feel obligated to do it and therefore we're not really fully living the life that we choose to live. I know there's a book I was reading. It's called uh, Values Factor. And what it talks about is not the values like I normally talk about, which is uh, character and and, and, um, what's the other word? My mind just disappeared there for it. For a second, but knowing that your character and integrity are always intact is very, very crucial to me uh, for you as an individual and then for those people that you attract. So that's why here we have to get the self love thing taken care of so that we present that particular person with great character and great t- integrity to the world. But anyway, what the book was talking about was. A different kind of uh, value factors. They're talking about what are the things that are important to you? What do you value? In other words, when you and I are having a conversation right now, where are you going to try to push the conversation to? Because those things are important to you. When you run to the uh, library, what section of the library are you going to run to? What books are you going to read? In other words, what things in your life that no matter what, they're going to get done? Those are the things that are your value. But anyway, it goes through all these different exercises and it gets you down to what are your top three values. And what it's basically saying is when you figure out those top three values, everything else in your life gets a no. You only live in the top three. And the reason for that is if you do that, as we talk about, because a lot of things we try to teach people to do is taken care of when we get stuff like this in place. In other words, your time, you know, people talk about you got to get better at time management. You got to get better at prioritizing things. You got to do all these different things. But the reality is, if you figure out those values and you're only living those top three, which is what the book is about, then all that stuff takes care of itself. Because remember, those are things that are going to get done. So we don't have to worry about the time management, and all that. We will figure it out. Uh, procrastination, as it talks about, comes because you're not living in those top three. But anyway, let's get back to this self-love and why it's important. Because when it comes to marriage, self-love plays a crucial role in maintaining a healthy and fulfilling relationship. And here's some of the ways that self-love impacts marriage. One, increase self-awareness. Self-love encourages individuals to develop a deep understanding of their own needs, their own desires, and it also sets boundaries. This self-awareness allows them to communicate their, their actual needs effectively to their partner, leading to better understanding and mutual respect within the marriage. This comes down to what we talked about on Thursday when we're talking about the four personalities. 
if you know who you are, you're very clear who you are, then it's easy to express that to your partner. And you'll also recognize why you're attracted, who you're attracted. But it also makes it very easy for you to talk to your partner and and let them know the things that you desire. What 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 makes you feel good? It also too it it creates stronger emotional well being. When individuals practice self love, they cultivate a positive relationship with themselves, and more importantly, it develops a healthy self esteem. Now, this emotional well being, it, it it what it does, it translates into the marriage where they can contribute to the relationship from a place of what we're talking about: happiness, confidence, and stability. You have to have that 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 true self love before you can come into your any situation feeling very confident and then presenting that uh, part of you to the world. Number three, it, it improves communication. Self love involves being honest with oneself and others. It also involves practicing is more likely to communicate openly and honestly uh, with your spouse. And then it allows you to express your feelings, your concerns, your desires. And this fosters uh, effective communication, understanding, and, of course, the ability to resolve conflicts in a healthy and constructive manner. Uh, we'll talk more in as we talk about Self Love Monday. We'll get more and more into this communication, how to do it, how to talk to your partner. Um, again, most of it is building a a safe place where your partner feels they can come and talk to you and be themselves. And you also feel that you can go and you can actually uh express what's going on in your life and folks if you don't have that that space where you can go and feel comfortable you don't have a successful relationship i had a young lady ask me that she was like um well he doesn't want to talk when i when when he's wrong or it's a conversation that's important to me and he just doesn't want to talk about it he shuts down and i said you're in the dating stage and you're putting up with that it's like it's not going to get better that's the wrong person a person that's not willing to communicate, not willing to talk to you, you can't have a successful relationship because you can't do the things that we're talking about here. Why would you go into that relationship? Now, of course, because we're dealing with marriages in this particular podcast, it makes it a little tougher because you're already in. But you have to be able to get your partner to start opening up and, and having these relationships, these conversations. And hopefully my podcast and things like this will get them to at least open up and start to communicate. Because, folks, without this, this relationship is headed in a direction that we don't want to talk about. But it is. And, it's, and unfortunately for some of you, if you've been in a long time, you're already at that point. You're already questioning uh, the relationship and how long you can or if you're going to stay in that. So hopefully, again, through what I'm teaching and other stuff that you, you do, that you guys can get on the right track because I don't believe in the word. I, uh, my wife and I used to call it the D word, which, as you know, is divorce. But we wouldn't uh, say that word because we didn't even want to put that in our household. We didn't want that to, to surround us. So, But it does happen when you don't address, one, this self-love. Because, again, that's what you take into your marriage. And it's in your marriage, if, if, since we're talking about marriages. But we got to get this resolved. Number four, uh, boundaries and self-respect. What self-love does, it encourages you to establish and maintain honest boundaries in your relationship. What you do is you value and respect yourself. You also revive, uh, wow, mine went blank. You also value and respect others. And this sets limits on what is acceptable and what is not. And it helps create that safe place we're talking about and creates a respectable environment within the marriage where both of you believe you're acknowledged and honored. And that only takes place if we have this, this uh, safe space where I can go and openly tell you how I feel and share. And then you're going to be there to help me because again, we are a partnership. I always tell people, if you have someone that they, I, I was sharing that with a gentleman and he was saying, but you can't be weak in front of your partner because then they'll leave. And I said, folks, if they, if they want to leave you because you're sharing with them and you're opening up, and I'm talking about mainly from a man's perspective, because this is where most guys have a challenge because women have been taught it's okay to open up and share and be emotional and this and that. So nobody has a challenge with that. But if a guy does it, then it's a negative. It's a weakness. If your wife makes you feel uh, some kind of way uh, negatively because you're opening up, 
I mean, you're in the relationship now because, again, we're talking marriages. So we got to figure out a way to get us over this hump. And we'll talk more about that through the different uh, conversations that we have throughout the podcast. But we got to get that addressed because if you can't go to her when things are tough, why do you need her? Folks, I know that's a very strong statement. And when you're married, it's a very, very strong statement. I tell people that in the dating stage, if you can't go to your partner, then that's a person that shouldn't be your partner. Because that's the person, that's when I need you the most. When I'm doubting myself, when th when things aren't going well, I got to know I can come to you because you got my back. If I can't come to you, then what do I need you for? That's that old saying about you know who your friends are when things are tough. Folks, no, no relationship is this more significant than in your marriage. If I can't come to you when I'm doubting myself, when I'm down and knowing that you got my back, when your guy comes to you, if he cries and tears in his eyes and he's saying, I'm doubting you, you got to be able to say, baby, I got you. We're going to make it through this together. And he's got to have enough self-love and respect for himself that he knows and confidence in himself that he can go have these conversations and have that safe place where I can open up and you have to allow that to take place in that relationship or you don't have a relationship. So anyway, uh, number five, we want to talk about what it does. It, 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 it creates less dependency on the partner for happiness. Um, I always laugh when I hear people talk about this is I had a young lady tell me that she said, well, well he doesn't make me happy. I said, that ain't his job. And her mouth kind of dropped open. I said, couldn't he do everything you asked him to do and you still be unhappy? And she said, yeah, because he doesn't control your emotions. He doesn't control your happiness. Only you get to do that. So quit trying to put this pressure on others. That's why we have Self Love Monday, because we're trying to teach you this is something you have to do. This is not someone else's responsibility. You shouldn't be looking for other people to have, help you become happy. Only you can do that. Now, that's not saying you shouldn't have a partner that's participating, doing the best they can to make this relationship flow and to bring joy within the relationship. Folks, that's two different conversations. But I'm saying they are not the reason that you're happy. Only you can make that decision. So when you practice self-love, it, it creates a, also a self of fulfillment and happiness, again, within yourself. And you understand uh, solely kind of what we're talking about. It's your responsibility. You have to take responsibility for your own well-being and reduce the burden on the marriage and allows both of you to focus on supporting and enhancing each other's happiness rather than relying on each other for it. Number six, it talks about uh, role modeling, healthy behavior. See, what self-love does is sets an example within the marriage. When one partner practices self-love and encourages the other to do the same, just like with children, they are watching what you do. And if, and and unfortunately, if it's not good, then unfortunately your kids have bad habits. I, I've always laughed when I hear parents ask, where do the kids get cussing from? And then you listen to them and every other word out of their, their mouth is a cussing word. And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea where they got that from. See folks, you are that reflection. Be that when it comes to self-love, show that reflection inside your marriage so that your partner will grab a hold of that and help them if they're weak in that particular area. Because remember, as I talked about before, like we talked about third gen, the fourth personality. If this is your strength, is the self-love, then that's the thing you bring to the relationship to help your partner get to that level and it makes both of you strong. So what it does, like I said, it creates a positive cycle where both individuals prioritize their own well-being and that in itself contributes to the overall health and wellness of the marriage. Because if both of you have self-love, folks, do you understand? And we're not looking for the other person for that, to fill that void. Do you understand how healthy that is for relationship and how strong of a relationship that we can create? So that's really the whole point of Self-Love Monday. We're going to dig deep into these different topics, show you how to make these things a, re uh, uh, make these things a reality to where you truly, truly love the person you see in the mirror. And a lot of that real quick, because I don't want to get off the podcast where people say, okay, that was cool. I heard what you said, but how do I get to self-love? What you do is, first off, listen to the things that you're saying when someone says something to you. Listen to those thoughts that pop into your head. If somebody says you have a nice shirt, 
how do you respond? Do you go, this old, this old shirt? Instead of being able to say thank you and be able to accept the compliment, be able to recognize that shows in itself that we lack self-love the way we feel about ourselves. We can't even take a compliment. So again, we'll get into all this stuff a little deeper uh, in other podcasts on how to make these things a reality. But the first thing I definitely want you to leave with today is understand, listen to the conversation. When people say things, you know what's going on because what is the first thought that pops into your head? And if it's negative, then we know it's something that we have to address. We have to rewrite what you guys may have heard me uh, say before. And if you haven't, you're going to hear me talk about all the time. Stories. It's all stories. Everything that's coming in your head is all stored stories that you have created from the past or new stories you're creating from those stories in the past. And we have to get a handle on those. So anyway, listen to the, to, to the thoughts when people say things to you or the thoughts that you're having when you're just sitting looking in the mirror. If you say, oh, man, you, you're so fat. Who told you that? According to who? And now you get to have that conversation. That, folks, this is not saying live in denial and run around and you're very unhealthy. And then you tell yourself, I'm not fat. Look at me. I'm slim. That, that's not the conversation that we're talking about. Self-love means I love me just the way I am, even if I feel like I'm overweight. But the reason that I'm going to get in better shape is not because I'm fat, not because people are talking about me. It's because it's for what's my my health It's it's so that I can be here longer and I want to strive to be the best me possible. And I look in the mirror and I just say, man, I love you just the way you are. And that's why we're striving to get better. And we're going to get better in our eating habits. And we're, we're doing that now. We're eating better and we're, we're taking get better care of ourselves. Why? Because it's what we deserve. You guys follow what I'm saying? The different conversation. And folks, it's not a story. See, the thing is, people will tell you to say, you're slim, you're slim until you buy into it. Folks, your, your mind's going to tell you you're lying. We don't even need to have that conversation, but you can tell it that we're moving in that direction. And the key is the moment you say it, you are moving in that direction. You just have to stay the course. So you're not lying to yourself when you say we're making the thrives, the, 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 the movement to make this happen right now. Because the moment you said it, you are making those movements. So you're not lying to yourself and your mind can accept that. And let's keep moving along that path until we become the better version of ourselves because we're always striving to get better. So I don't ever want to say you at the best you because you're always going to be striving to get better and better and better. That's what this journey we call life is all about. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this first segment. Folks, this is just the beginning. It's going to be an awesome journey. Uh, send me comments, send me feedback, stuff that you want me to talk more about, uh, challenges you're having as far as your self-love, some examples that maybe you've worked through because we can talk about those. Um, again, we're going to take the podcast live soon, hopefully within the next few months. I'll always keep you guys posted. So when that happens, but in the meantime, we're covering the different topics that hopefully you can take and you can run and change your life forever. Cause as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Take this and run with it. Learn to love yourself because again, and we've all said it, but do we believe it? And that is, if you don't love yourself, how can you expect others to love you? Because you're teaching people how to treat you based on how you treat you. All right. So I look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday where we're going to also talk about marriage building. And we take from stuff like this to self-love and that helps us build a stronger relationship. But on Thursdays, it's going to specifically be on uh, different tools or different topics that we can use to build that stronger uh, marriage, just like uh, Mondays is going to be to make a stronger you. All right. So I look forward to talking to you guys on Thursday. Practice the self-love. Listen to the conversation you're having with yourself. And let's go out here and become the best version of you. Why? Because you are valuable, you are worthy, and you deserve it. I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.